Okay. I mean, uh, again, you're, you're pretty close to to other family members, so if you could give them a kidney, then you could give them you know, a court vote. I don't, I don't know personally of any cases where that's actually happened, but it's certainly potential. Yeah. Is there one more? Yeah, yeah. And like I said, the advantage of having, the advantage of having that is, you know that as you go throughout life, if you get any sort of disease or anything where stem cell therapy would be advantageous, if they can use your core blood to what's been, what's been saved, if they can use that to generate tissue or whatever, then you know it's your own tissue, essentially. And it's not going to be rejected. You're not going to have any typical side effects that you have when you're so. All right. In order to, to talk about the freezing that uh, Kristen was talking about, is that freezing, is that a, a, a just a standard 30, zero centigrade freezing, or is that an absolute zero freezing to preserve? Well, you can't get that to zero. It's, it's simply like a which is, I think, uh, 212, minus 212. Yeah, absolute zero is physically enough. Right, close to Yes. Uh, your example shows that it's basically a dollar cell. Yeah. Uh, I think you heard of manipulation, but if you're a kind of boy, can you manipulate the boy or girl? How do you Well, it, the word dollar cell is used here as sort of um, metaphorically in that we have one cell giving rise to progeny. So it's just a term, it doesn't mean it's actually a female cell. Um, in terms of choosing the, the gender, that, that is before the cell is fertilized, because once the, uh, the gender is determined by the male, see, the, there's either a Y chromosome or an X chromosome that's sperm cell. So it is possible to, um, because the, the X chromosome is so much larger than the Y chromosome, it's possible to spin them down, and the Y, the X, the ones with the X chromosome, the ones that will give rise to the daughters, are actually heavier. And so they'll come down like this, and the male sperm cells stay like this, so you can, it's not perfect, but you can increase your chances of having a daughter or, or a son. It's not perfect. Okay, this is just a simple graph, just to, to reiterate this point about differentiation and focus. Uh, on the bottom, you've got that differentiation scale. The further it differentiates, the lower the potency goes down. So up on the upper hand, on the upper left hand side, you've got the embryonic stem cells, which are you know, not differentiated, but very potent. Then you go all the way down to the adult stem cells, which are sort of in the middle. And then you've got the somatic cells, which are the terminally differentiated cells that really do not have any potency at all. So, so now we know pretty much what stem cells are and what they do. What can they do for us? What are the research benefits? Well, uh, quite a number of things, actually. In development research, uh, stem cells can be used to investigate uh, how birth defects are formed, uh, genetic abnormalities. Um, we don't really have a good model of, you know, uh, like Down syndrome or these other chromosome abnormalities. And we might be able to model that better using stem cells. Um, drug testing. Uh, if we can differentiate, if we have a pool of stem cells that we can turn into whatever we want, we can see what the effects of any drug is going to be in any tissue of the body. And reliably, and because each these stem cells are clonal, so we know exactly you know what they are, and they all come from the same source. And so that's it's a more reliable way of testing for potency of different drugs. And of course, there are a number of cell-based therapies. This is what the regenerative medicine school really gets into, where we're able to, to create transplantable cells or tissues or organs. Um, and I'm going to go through um, just a whole list of some potential applications. Uh, brain damage. Uh, brain injury, most types of brain injury are associated with the death of neurons. Um, if we have neural stem cells, uh, we can use those to contribute to the population of neurons in the brain um, during pregnancy, for example, or after injury. And in adults, um, so the problem is after an injury, the neural, stem, the neural stem cell activity is usually insufficient, usually it's not high enough. And so if you're able to add some more in there, we can maybe help people recover from things like Strokes or you know, brain injuries, spinal cord injury, spinal cord injury. Um, and uh, 
I have some uh, some references here, some papers that you can check out. Um, Mori et al. from the journal of the of Work on Metabolism, um, just in, in 2005. And we've been able to show that human embryonic stem cells, um, we can do this, we can differentiate them into their own stem cells. And uh, they're able to integrate into the host brain, they're able to form relevant synapses with the other neurons that are in there. Um, this has been published. But again, it's, you know, now this research is, um, is, uh, is in fully uh, valuable. Uh, one step down from the brain is the spinal cord. Uh, spinal cord injury can result in uh, paralysis. Christopher Reeve and a number of other people have this happen. Uh, uh, work in Korea, this is just a single example, so you know, don't, don't be too excited about this, but uh, stem cells were actually used in Korea from um, a built cord blood and transplanted into a Korean patient who had been paralyzed with spinal cord injury. And uh, she now had to walk her own, that's her own right. Um, but again, there's one case. Uh, human, human embryonic stem cells uh, have been shown to be differentiated from other neurons, so we know that this is possible. Um, another potential application is Lou Gehrig's disease, which is not exactly spinal cord injury, but something different than involves full body paralysis. But um, neural stem cells. Um, yes? That picture there, we know. If uh, this lady is the breast and then walk and walk and walk and say something. I don't know, but uh, you can check, check that paper and um, find out more about her. But she's, you know, she's at least able to walk and walk and walk. Parkinson's disease. Uh, this was a big one uh, back in the election. Of course, Michael J. Fox has Parkinson's disease and people was lobbying pretty strongly um, for a number of uh, stem cell initiatives throughout the country. It's a motor disorder that's caused by the loss of a particular type of neuron in the brain, called dopaminergic neurons. They're neurons that produce dopamine, basically, it's an essential neurotransmitter. Um, and if you don't have enough dopamine, you get hyperkinesis, which is being related to memory. And uh, it's you know, a debilitative disease. And uh, so again, Human embryonic stem cells have been shown to differentiate these dopamine, dopaminergic neurons. So we can, if we could take these and put them in humans, then we might be able to restore uh, some of the symptoms that we like on the box. Uh, diabetes. Uh, type 1 diabetes is caused by a lack of beta cells, these are cells that produce insulin. Um, and so the lack of this insulin results in the lack of glucose regulation, because that's what insulin does. It maintains your glucose levels at a steady state. Um, and so the loss of this causes many side effects that the body with diabetes is really aware of. Um, you get comas, uh, you have a high risk of vascular disease, both macro and micro, um, you can to it because the, the small vessels just you know, shut off. Um, but also in one type of neuropathy, so you can have retinopathies. My cousin has type 1 diabetes and she's losing sight in her eye because of it. Um, so it's been shown that embryonic stem cells can differentiate into insulin producing cells uh, in vitro. And that uh, the transplantation of these insulin producing cells, which can ameliorate diabetes symptoms, that uh, was done in the uh, more about it. Heart damage, um, heart attacks, uh, anything like that can cause damage to the heart. Um, there have been some good models of myocardial infarction from these heart attacks uh, in mice. And uh, after, they've, after they've had these, uh, these heart attacks, they've been given stem cells. And the stem cells actually preserve their hearts, preserve their heart function. When a heart attack happens, part of your heart dies. It doesn't, doesn't regenerate. Um, but if you give stem cells in the small problem, they, they, they are able to uh, not die as much and retain some function. Um, there have been studies in humans that have shown that they get uh, bone marrow stem cells after heart attacks. They get uh, beneficial remodeling to their hearts. Um, humans with congestive heart failure um, can have the benefit also 